Hey, this is Mitaka, and today we're going to take the um, animation that we made last time and just import it into Unity. So I created a new Unity project and I used the 2D URP um, yeah, template for the project essentially. So I'll just click that and create it. And here in the background, I have the finished thing. And I already have like a couple of uh, assets here because I tested the process earlier, but we can do it from scratch. So we have a camera in here, uh, which is just rendering here from the side. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a small background. Um, so in sprites, I already prepared did you hear that? <laughs> there was my microphone. Um, I already prepared a small background that we can just drop in there. I'm going to put the game view on the side here so that we can see what we're doing. And I'm positioning that at zero, zero, zero. And for the camera, I will add a pixel perfect camera and you can basically set any resolution that you want, but um, I think I'm going to double this. So 640 times 360. It's essentially what um, a lot of the pixel art games use because if you multiply this by three, you get the full HD resolution. So if we use this, like every three pixels will be merged into one pixel, which will still make it look like pixel art, but quite high resolution pixel art. So now we have a nice background. And the next thing I'm going to add is um, a sprite. Uh, actually, no, let's export them first to the folder. So uh, I still have like my file open here and now I will export it to a different folder. So here I have my assets folder from the Unity project. We're going to um, sprites, character, uh, create a new animation here, but I'm going to call run two because I already did like a first test Then character run is fine. And then I will re-render everything because it just takes like less than a second. And then in Unity, you can see that it started importing and run two now has all of these sprites. And we need to change a couple of settings. I want it to be like point, no filter. I will also disable compression to get the best possible result. And I'm going to set it to single. This is very important because otherwise your animation will start wiggling around because the center is not always centered. Um, let's apply this. And then we get all the elements and then I can just drag and drop my character in here. Um, you can see that he is uh, quite small. I'm right now not sure if that is by design, but it looks like it's fine. Like if you want to have him in a bigger size, you can also scale it up, but Remember, if you put this on full screen, this is like a reasonable character size, actually. It's not uh, too bad, especially if you have something like um, Dead Cells, where you have some platforming elements and also some combat elements. You want a smaller character so that you can uh, see a lot. So I will position him in the front here. And now we need to set up an animation. So I will add an animator to this. And then we need to create an animation controller. So let's quickly do that. So I will go to assets and here in animation order already created an animation controller, but we'll do it from scratch. So animation controller is down here. And again, calling character two. And then in here we have uh, no animations, but we can already drag that in here. Nice. Then uh, we need to create an animation for this one. And I think the easiest way to do it is just to go to animation. No, actually we'll just 
right click here, create animation, call it run two and open it up. And I will just drag this window into here so that we have it open over here. Um, so then in the scene, we can select the character and create a new clip. So let's click create and run to v1, we want to save it to. Cool, and then we just need to import all these sprites. So go to character, run to, select all of these sprites and just drag them in here. And then you can see they're all set up and if I scroll, you can already see him running down there. In the animation controller, I will not change anything. <laughs> Uh, I will change something in the animation itself. Uh, I want to loop the time, like make sure that this box is ticked so that he keeps running uh, if you go into play mode and he doesn't run just a single time. Now let's play it. And if we double click on game, we can do it in full screen and you can see it works well. Like you can see that our animation is playing as it should. So. One last tip, because now is the uh, point of time where you can actually start iterating really quickly from Blender to Unity. Um, I normally have two screens open and I have them side by side, but I will do it on one screen now. So if I go to Blender, you can see that the animation actually keeps running if I tap into Blender. And normally that doesn't happen you need to set that in the preferences. So I will go out of the play mode and then in edit preferences, edit preferences, hello? Okay, <laughs> you can go to player, where is it? Uh, such a long list. Actually, uh, I think it's in project settings edit project settings. Yeah, here we go. And then player. And then if you open the resolution and presentation tab, you can click the run and background button. You should remember to uncheck this once you build your game. But while animating, I always have this enabled because then I can just go into play mode. Um, I can even yeah, just zoom in here so that I can preview the animation. I can disable everything that I don't want. And then if I go to Blender, I can do changes to it and it will automatically update. Let me show you what I mean. Um, let's say I don't like the color of his shirt anymore. Like the same thing works with animations, but it's easier to show with, uh, with colors, I think. Um, let's go into the shader editor. We could make this a green shirt. So I will just uh, make both of these colors green. And then if I press Control F12, it will render all the frames and that takes less than a second. And then if I tap back into Unity, it will recognize that the frames changed and it will apply them automatically so that I can already see them. And this is really, really cool because now I can basically like tweak my animation all the time, tweak the colors until it fits and works really, really well. And I have it in Unity. And that's it. It's super simple, actually. It's very quick to set up. And then you can just keep animating and keep uh, like adding more animations to it. You just have to change the um, animation path. Like let's say I want to create a second animation, I will change the output path and create a jump here. And then I will also rename it to character jump, accept. And then in the action editor, so let's go to back to dope cheat action editor. We have run, right? And we can copy this and do another one that we call jump and then like change all the keyframes and you can press control F12 
12 to export it, import another animation in Unity, and then you have your second animation set up as well. Um, it's a bit of a hassle to change it to Blender all of the time, but it is quite fast because you're not going back and forward between animations too much, I hope. Uh, otherwise, you might think of a different system. Here. And that's it. Um, in the next tutorial, I will quickly also show you how to set up the background that I made here. Um, because you probably want to have that as well. And then we are basically done and you can start making your inside inspired pixel art game. Okay, see you in the next one.